Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. Today's video is going to be about the pros and cons of GP training. I recently did a video on the benefits of GP training. I will leave a link to the video down below. This video will mainly focus on the drawbacks of being a GP and why I didn't do GP training. If you are new to my channel, I am Lavanya and I am a medical registrar here in the UK. I am specialising in acute medicine. I did do a GP job in FY2 so I do have some experience working in a GP practice. I also did apply for GP training but I gave it up to pursue core medical training instead. So the first reason, you have access to less resources as a GP. GP is also called family medicine, family practice or community medicine in other countries. Working in a GP practice is so different compared to working in a hospital or in urgent care. You definitely have less access to resources and investigations like bloods, x-rays, CT scans. Yes, GPs can request those investigations, but you don't normally get it within the same day and you normally have to make decisions without those investigations on hand. GPs rely a lot on their clinical skills and their clinical judgment and most GPs have to be very good at it. If you're working in hospital or in urgent care, you have easy access to investigations, treatments and specialist opinion if you need it. You can pretty much get it within the same day and some doctors do like having that option for security and reassurance. Since I started working as a doctor, I realised how much we rely on results to reassure our patients. Yes, you don't have pneumonia, your chest sounds clear on auscultation and your chest x-ray is normal. Working as a GP can be very isolating. Yes, you do work with other GPs and other nurse practitioners, but you are normally alone most of the day. Even during lunch, most GPs spend it in their room doing letters or referrals. It is a lot different working in a hospital. You interact with other staff members all the time. I can see why working alone might suit some doctors. It all depends on your personality and how you like to work. Some doctors prefer to work alone, but it is definitely not for me. GPs normally provide a wide range of appointments. A telephone appointment is 5 minutes, a normal appointment is 10 minutes, a double appointment is 20 minutes, procedures like implants and coils take around 30 minutes and home visits are 45 minutes. The appointment time might seem reasonable but it is a challenge especially the 10 minute appointments which is the most common appointment slot. GP appointments are normally 10 minutes and in that 10 minutes you need to take the history, do a targeted exam and come up with a diagnosis and a management plan. That is a challenge on its own. I still don't know how GPs manage to do all that in 10 minutes. Some GPs do run late, even senior GPs, but that is not good either because you don't want to keep other patients waiting. You see why it is a struggle. I feel that you need to take as much time as you need with the patient in order to do a good job as a doctor. Yes, there will be some patients that just want a repeat prescription or a sick note that will take 5 minutes, but there will be times where there is a poorly 5-year-old asthmatic patient that you need to do XYZ and maybe blue light to the hospital. And arranging a hospital transfer for your patient takes time and it will be difficult if you're already running late or have a busy surgery. I always feel guilty keeping patients waiting. I understand that they are taking time out of their day to see you and they have other commitments as well like work, school, picking up their children from nursery. So having to run late gives me a lot of unnecessary stress and pressure. Not something I want to deal with on a daily basis. The next one is home visits. You either love it or hate it and I am really not a fan of home visits. I rather do nights than home visits. It is just a preference. GPs normally do at least one to two home visits every day and if you are the GP on call, you can do up to three to four home visits. It really helps patients who otherwise can't get to the surgery because they are too poorly or they are bed bound access healthcare services. I am personally a bit wary of going 
going into people's houses. At the end of the day, you are going into a stranger's house. As a doctor, you also have less control of the situation if you're not in your usual working environment. It also depends on the catchment area of your practice. If you are in a good area, then the home visits wouldn't be too bad. But sometimes you have to go to some rough areas and some homes are just not the best, if you know what I mean. Also, the pets. No, definitely not for me. Apart from home visits, GPs do look after nursing home residents. So some GPs have a day allocated where they visit a particular nursing home or a care home. They review residents that are not well, do repeat prescriptions, ensure that the dolls are up to date, discuss with family with regards to advanced care planning and provide palliative care for patients that are end of life. It is a lot of work and it will normally take a whole day or a whole afternoon. Again, this is a good service by the NHS and it is good for the nursing home residents and their families. So you must have a good interest in community geriatrics if you want to become a GP. Many years ago, GPs used to be a very family orientated practice. You know your GP, your GP knows you and your family, but because of the changes to the NHS, GP practices have changed a lot. It is now run more like a business. Now most people don't have a specific GP and you are likely to see a different GP every time you go in. Some people think that GPs have lost its family touch and this might be why it is no longer appealing to some doctors. Working as a GP can be busy. GPC at least 20 patients a day and after seeing 10 patients in your morning surgery, you are not done. You still have a lot of admin to do. That is why most GPs I know work through their lunch doing letters, referrals and contacting patients. And if you have a midday home visit to do, you have to do all the paperwork and admin after your afternoon surgery. So most GPs do stay late doing admin work. If you are lucky enough to be a partner, you will have even more paperwork and admin to do because you are in charge of the whole practice and you need to make sure that your practice is meeting the CQC targets. Most GPs do become partners. You do get a higher salary, but it is a lot of extra work and mostly non-clinical work, so it might not appeal to some doctors. Like I mentioned before, most GP practices are now run like a business, so GPs need to be equipped with leadership and managerial skills in order to be successful and to do well. That is all for my video today. I hope you guys found this useful. Like all specialities, GP has its own set of challenges and it is definitely not for everyone. It all depends on your personality and what you prefer as a doctor. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more videos and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!